All right, last night we finished up those trusses in the center. It was kind of an easy deal. And now we're gonna start on this set of trusses, but we've got a little bit of work. We've got somewhere, we got a bunch of hangers that we need to install. And those are gonna go on every one of those vertical uprights on that three-ply girder truss to support the trusses that are going out to this end wall. So first thing I gotta do is get these installed. Yes, nice, nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is this right here, this is 18 foot six inch. This is the heel height where my trusses are gonna be. I need to transfer that measurement over to all those spots where my hangers are gonna go. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and mount up my laser. It's gonna be easier than snapping a line across 45 feet because the weather is such that I can see this green laser really nicely, even in the outdoors. So by the time I move my lift over, this should hopefully stop bouncing around enough to get some marks on these. See, look at this. We just need that post to stop bouncing around and it might not happen. <laughs> this might have been a bad idea. We're gonna have to just snap a line across this. It's not that I mind snap lines. So the laser is just so nice. Seven, three, three quarters. That is my truss location there. And then every seven foot six center should be, should be accurate. Let's go ahead. And 22, four and a half center. That should be. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from that side to make sure that we're accurate. Dang, look at that. Perfect. I actually, we're off a 16th. I, I'm not gonna say perfect, but a 16th is, is good enough for this layout because it'll be good enough. All right, now what I need to do is I'm just gonna give myself a nice plumb line off of one side so I can mount this bracket. Also, I'll know where my truss is gonna go. I've got a 15 inch heel, so as long as I give myself a mark with this little 24 inch level, I should be good. So I know where my truss is gonna go. And now we'll take a hanger. All right, now once I got that, I'm just gonna take myself a nice piece of scrap. We're not gonna make it super tight. Look at that, right through the gusset plate. Didn't even matter. That one mattered. Does not like going through all that gusset plate. I mean, that's, this is solid gusset plate. And honestly, I could have the wrong fuel in here. It's possible we changed the fuel and there's two different types of fuel for these new guns. I don't know which one's which. Okay, only four more to go. All right, with all these purlin marks on our trusses, it is super important for accuracy. Not just because we care about quality, but because we are sheathing this roof, which means all these purlin locations have to be spot on. Otherwise, you might run the risk of a joint where your, your sheathing comes together, not being exactly in the center. And then obviously you got problems, you got to add more lumber. We don't want to do that. So two foot center perfect is the goal. And then also making sure that these trusses are all lined up when we mark them so that there's consistency throughout. Make sense? All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and install these. Am I gonna hit, Greg? I don't know. Well, no, so I know. I have a hard time believing it's gonna go this far. I'm only out at uh, 55 feet. I'm not even halfway through the load chart. Does it make any sense? No. 
that's kind of like almost where you need to be for height wise. You need to go to drop another foot and a half, two foot. Yeah. Can you just spin that end my way? Yeah, I'm gonna have to, one second. All right, well, that's kind of unfortunate. The Magni was not able to go all the way over there, which I think it should be. I feel like there's maybe either a, this thing is so smart, you can put limits on it so that it doesn't go in certain areas. I'm actually gonna go ch double check and make sure that there's no limits on the location of these because it seems like even with no weight on it, I can only go so far, even though the load chart gives me another like yeah, I don't have any 30 more, feet of stick. So can I come down more? I just I just thought of that. I just thought, wow. you know, maybe I better I check, make, it, make right sure there's no you're... limits on this thing. All right, so I called Magni and talked to their tech guy. Two things maybe are possible. One, there was a button turned on on the limits page. I'm not sure if it was exactly our issue. The other thing is this thing has to be within one degree of level in order to get the max loading on the chart. So if it senses that you are now out of one degree level, it's gonna, it's gonna beep at you. And that might've been what was going on. So what we did was we boomed out all the way, we turned off that limits page, and then I checked the auto level page and just offset my machine to the other side of that one degree bubble that you can see here in the screen. This is where you gotta be within the one degree. So we, we went off to the side hoping that when we moved our boom all the way out, if there's a little bit of movement, it's gonna stay within that one degree. And I guess we're now gonna go ahead and give it a go because we have plenty of stick. It's not the sticks, not the issue. It was just a sensor or loading or something. Oh, she moving, huh, Greg? We're already way further than we were. Yeah, I don't have any more though. Can I come down more? I don't, I don't think you'll make it. Right now you're... All I gotta do is get past the half point of the truss, Greg. You might even make it if you just start swinging around there. Yeah, I think so. Yep, no, no. Take, climb my girt ladder. Yeah. Now this is gonna be flush on this flush, end. Correct, and that one's a flush over there. There you go. Okay, cool. All right, we're gonna try something. We actually did this once before, but we didn't do it very smart. And we're gonna try and do this a little better. We're gonna build this truss set on the ground since we have the Magni and the capacity, and we're gonna swing it in. The advantage being that everything can be done right here at working height, all these purlins, and then we don't have to do it up in the lift. And I think it'll be cool too. So uh, what we're gonna do is use the girder truss because it's seven foot six to these blocks. We're gonna lay out the trusses and then we'll run our purlins. We'll see how this goes. I'm excited. We've been wanting to do this for a while. And I think this will help us feel a little bit better about doing it over there too, Greg, you know? Uh, oh, shit! Uh, I'll ask you if you're okay. Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. It do be like that sometimes. Thought that was it. I thought that was it. All right, there we go. Now, let's get our pearls, which are right here. Are these, yeah. wait, are these the right all ones? the middles, yeah. All right, cool. Centered up. You want to fix that or no? Uh, I don't think we need to. It'll fix itself when we get up in the air. Okay. It is a lot easier than up on the lift, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the other thing about this is obviously, I like to climb around on the trusses. I think it's easier and more efficient than kind of working out of the lift. So here I can kind of climb around and I'm not at height. So there's definitely a safety factor 
if this works. I know there's actually a post frame company out there, they're called FBI. Look it up, it's called Q-Lift. They do everything on the ground, and then they have huge hydraulic cylinders and I-beams that lift the whole roof structure, and then the walls come in. I don't know if that's worth it. That seems crazy, but they've probably done the analysis. Their insurance has told them that if you do this, your insurance will be cheaper, I'm assuming. But I don't know, this, ain't, this, isn't, this wasn't bad, as long as it goes in. It just has to go in. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got it built, we got it strapped up, we've got cables because we've got gusset plates in the way. I know some people commented on not using straps because of the gussets. We use the cables when the gussets are there, but a lot of times our gussets are not in the way so we can get away with it, but not these. These, we're gonna go ahead and put our cables on. This is what I'm talking about. We've got our nice lift cables here, and then our straps will be away from all these gussets and we're gonna go ahead and try to lift this thing. We'll see what it does when we take it off the ground a couple inches. I don't think we need any more bracing. There's not a whole lot here. And I know a lot of people might say, why don't you just sheathe it? Why, you've already gone this far, why not sheathe it? Well, because our sheathing comes in tomorrow. So I'm not waiting for the sheathing to come in because I also have the ability to, to do as much squaring up and straightening as I can on the building versus now. So let's see what this does. Hold on a second. I should probably tagline it, but I don't see any problem. It ain't gonna be perfect. It's gonna set in where we want it, right? Sure. All right, I'm just gonna spin this all the way around, okay? Am I over it? I'm over it. How far do I turn? Okay. Awesome, that actually worked out pretty good. We've got uh, this all set into place. Went into the pockets quite easy, into the hangers. Now we just gotta line everything up, get it where we want it, and fasten it off. All right, now that we have uh, the trusses in the pockets on the hangers here, if you kinda look around here, you're gonna see that we've got quite a big gap. And also, these plies, they were nailed at the factory together, but they've also got some sort of gappage, and that will change the dimension of the building if everything is spread out because these are all supposed to be at an exact point. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a 10 inch GRK and hopefully suck this in nice and tight and then we can actually do our screws on our hanger as we're supposed to. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna eyeball this. I think I'm gonna give myself a measurement so I can be as close to center as possible. We're gonna go about three and an eighth or so. So right about here. I already gave myself a line where I think I want to be. So let's see. I hope I don't break a wrist here. Okay. 
Greg, here's what I want, buddy. Push on this and help me keep it from twisting and I'm gonna pull this in, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I just pull the threads. Yeah, but did you see that thing just suck in? I did not. The, the bottom it. is super tight, so we're good. It's just that the top heel, you know, the bottom is where the measurement is, but yeah, dude, that sucked that sucker. You hear it? I heard it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, ready, Greg? <laughs> oh, boy. Dude, that, mm. Not only did it suck the truss in, but also it crush this uh, center ply. So we're just doing that on each of these, making sure that everything is as tight as possible because this four and a half inch dimension was figured into the building. Therefore, if it's not four and a half, it could be spreading out the in interior width or length of the building. I guess I don't even know if I should say length, width. Honestly, it, does, it doesn't, that don't matter. Well, sure it does. It does if, if this is locked in. If we come and put a- But we're going off the outside of the Yeah, truss. but if we do a bottom uh, cord, if we put a wind tie go, in here. Go off the bottom outside. Yes, that is true. And then those other plies just kind of get. But then you're the potentially, space. you know, not in plane exactly. So by making it all perfect, it will be better than spread out, you know? If this is tight. No, I agree. I think, I, I think everything should be tight, but I think for dimension wise, I don't know if it's that important. I'm gonna throw you off this lift, dude. <laughs> it's, it matters to me, okay? It doesn't really matter, it just matters to you. It matters to me. Oh, that pop. Dude, don't worry, it went tight as can be. Yeah, this actually has a couple pieces of gravel in it, I think. In the grand scheme of things, those two plies on this side don't, don't really matter. I think it makes our job easier. Okay, where do you want this? I'll put this here. You can go wherever you want. Okay. No, it matters. <laughs> There we go. There you go. Give me a little push my way if you can. Right, right there. Yeah, we kind of messed up that, those columns, didn't we? Don't look at this, guys. We're gonna add a ply in here to go all the way up. All right, what am I doing? I'm gonna, you're gonna need to nail it when I... Uh, okay. After I pulled it. Easy peasy. So these uprights here are eight foot on center. So we wanna make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. So I'm just gonna make a eight foot and a 16 foot, and then we can move them so that they're, you know, they're spaced properly. That one's gotta go over a little. That's why we got, we got teamwork, man. Just gotta hit the nail. Mm, right there. Oh, is that, that's already cut down too. Maybe. That's already, um, no, no, we'll cut that off. <laughs> Booyah. What's up, Cole? We were wondering if you're gonna come out, if you had time for us, or is it just all gonna be your girlfriend today? Yeah. All right, trusses on this section are done, which means we get to move on to that big girder truss, and probably the, probably the most challenging truss section on the build. I don't think it's gonna be horrible. I just think it's gonna be different and we're gonna to have to slow down and think about it before we just run into it like these trusses, which we do day in, day out on every building. All right, so for the girder truss to be installed, it's a three-ply girder and it's gonna go right next to this three-ply column. So we're actually gonna add three additional plies to support the weight of that down to the foundation. Now we have a bracket already installed and we've decided we're not going to uninstall this. We're gonna router out a quarter inch of the first ply we're basically going to laminate the three plies to this three ply, and then we're going to add another 
bracket to the outside in essence having three ears and then we're gonna get long bolts to go through this whole thing. So the nice thing is this is a 3 16th bracket. So when we did the laser layout for the brackets in the post build early on, we have those dimensions. We know that this girder truss sits at 10 foot elevation. So 10 foot plus 3 16 and then that post way over there is 3 8. So we know exactly what to cut these plies in order to make sure that our girder truss sits at the correct elevation so that the bearing point of our trusses is correct. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is we need to add three plies to our three ply column, making it six plies. Because we have a bracket that we're gonna leave, we do need to route route the material so this sits flush. That seems really, that seems a lot deeper than I need it to be. Greg, can you just do a double check on the measurement of the bracket? That's too deep, I think. Let's, let's double check that. There. I had to go a little heavy. There we go. There we go. I do like this handle though. It makes it very comfortable. Doesn't that seem like it's way too much? Or is it just me? It's a little heavier than quarter. That's okay though. A little heavier than quarter? Yeah, it's okay. You want it in between quarter and 3 sixteenths. That's what I measured. So it needs to be less than a quarter. It needs to be a little less than a quarter, yeah. But what's the harm in this being a little over a quarter? I would make it a quarter. Right there. You think, I think this will go through enough to grab the yeah, other side? Yeah, it should. Okay, hit the middle my way. That's good right there. This is gonna be the best, straightest columns ever. You are good. You are good, dude. I'm not good, I'm just strong. Okay, you are strong like ox. Okay, give me a top push right there. Dang. That's what I was worried about. It made a nice hole though. <laughs> okay, let's see if this fits. This is rounded. We gotta cut that bottom out. Cause there's a- uh... Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. Let's see if we got it. Okay, I do need to go over a little. So we're catching on something somewhere. Wait, I'm hitting something down there, dude. We'll force it in. Okay. All right, we're gonna go right here. I'll get more of these, but this is all I got for now. Hello. I didn't suck it in. Ready? There we go. Just need a little bit of bar clamp when you got me. No, dude, you are my bar clamp. Right, you got your chisel on you or your wood chisel? Nope. You know, for somebody that wants everything to be like great. Mm -hmm. Thought you would have done better. Uh, top, out, uh, no, no, too much. Right there. We're good. You know what time it is. Do I? I asked, that was the question. Oh. All right guys, that's it for this video. We got the two sections of trusses done and 
honestly, that's the easy stuff. Now we're going to have to set this big girder truss. We're going to have to do the, the kind of weird stick frame truss section with the dormer. And that's what you want to stick around for. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, make sure you do that so you can follow along with this build. It's going to be cool. It's going to be out of this world. I'm super excited to share with you guys. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get this all ready for tomorrow when we install this big thing. Look at this thing. It's massive and get onto those trusses. So with that, we'll catch you guys later. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and have a great one.